One of the single most important things you as a chemistry student will need to be able to do is develop the skill of formula writing. When elements combine, they generally do so because they're made of oppositely charged ions. Positive metal ions, negative non-metal ions. When they combine, they'll always do so in such a way that their ion charges cancel out and add up to zero. For example, if the charges are plus one and minus one, they will simply cancel out one to one. For example, when sodium and chloride come together, you get a formula like that, NaCl. They cancel out one to one. Plus one and minus one add up to zero already. The same thing, if they're the same size charge, they're going to cancel out one to one. So zinc and oxide will be ZNO. Aluminum and phosphide will be Al. If the charges aren't the same size, you have to figure out how many of the smaller charge is it going to take to cancel out one of the larger charge. For example, it's going to take two minus ones to cancel out a plus two. So the formula will be x, y, two. One x to two y's. Notice I don't actually write the one here. Like in algebra, the one does not have to be written when it represents quantity x plus 3, y minus 1, it takes 3 minus 1's to cancel out a plus 3, x, y, 3. So for calcium and chloride, it takes 2 chlorides to cancel out the calcium. For the iron 3 chloride, it takes 3 chlorides to cancel out an iron. And that's the formula for those compounds. Here, the larger charge belongs to the negative ion, also known as the anion. It takes two plus ones to cancel out a minus two. It takes three plus ones to cancel out a minus three. So when copper and oxide combine, it will take two coppers to cancel out the oxide. And it will take three lithiums to cancel out the nitride. What do you do if they don't cancel out nice and easy, like plus 3 and minus 2? Here you're going to use the same tactic you use for finding the lowest common denominator. Multiply the two numbers together, and that will give you what the total charge needs to be after the compound is formed. 3 times 2 is 6. Therefore, we need x to be a total of plus 6 and y to be a total of minus 6. How many plus 3s makes plus 6? Two of them. How many minus 2s make minus 6? Three of them. x2, y3. 3 times 2 is 6. We're going to need 2 plus 3s and 3 minus 2s. Plus 6, minus 6. Al2, O3, aluminum oxide. Same thing goes here. 2 times 3 is 6. So we're going to need 3 of the plus 2s and 2 of the minus 3s to make plus 6 and minus 6. x3, y2, mg3, n2. Notice that the same technique works for every single one here. We have plus 1 and minus 3. 1 times 3 is 3. We need 3 of these to make plus 3. We only need one of those to make minus 3. So we can use that same technique for any of these.